You're watching DIY Volts. I'm Seth. I was given a tour of a micro hydro system that is producing over 200 watts consistently. The owner and installer of this system is a guy named Eric. He's living in an off grid yurt in the mountains of Western North Carolina. Now you might be thinking 200 to 250 watts is not a lot of power, but he lives in some pretty dense woods and doesn't have a lot of solar options for his place. And so micro hydro is what's feeding his little off grid yurt with electricity. Now, Eric knows his system better than I do. And so I'm going to turn the camera over to him so he can talk about his installation. He is using equipment from Langston's Alternative Power. I'll have a link to that in the description down below. And I'll also give you links to my Signature Solar affiliate account if you want to check out some optional equipment for Micro Hydro. So the first thing he's going to share is a couple of his attempts at doing an intake for the water until he gets to his third attempt, which is the final and working model. So let's go ahead and hand the camera over to Eric and let him talk about his hydro installation. This is my, my third attempt at intake design. Um, first two were pretty much epic failures. This was the most epic of the failures. And um, this was, when we get down there, it'll make more sense. There's a rock ledge that I could get some water flowing into this thing. And the penstock came out of there. Uh, this I had in the creek, it's kind of like this, running into here, and it was doing pretty good. That immediately started to clog, so I cut the hole. Um, it filled up and was running fantastically, but I was a little overambitious on m my site selection. Um, it's wide, and there's multiple little places where the, the water's running, and so I had rocks and patch clay that I used. I mean, it, it was took me all day, and it was... It looked great, was running great. I was just like, yes. Well, I came back the next morning and all this was, I had to go look for it down the creek because the clay is just not substantial enough to hold back that kind of water pressure. Attempt number two worked well. It stayed in place, it's concrete, but it was, it's, it's kind of this sort of setup, you know, and it did what it's supposed to do. It collected water out of the creek perfectly, but it collected everything else out of the creek perfectly too. So it was a daily thing to go unclog this thing so this is uh this is attempt number three and just by quickly looking at it you can see was uh engineered and designed by professionals with much more experience than myself it's really working flawlessly it, it it does what it does perfectly i mean i haven't had to clean the screen off at all or anything i, I do need to i've got a little bit of tidying up to do with the pond liner in there but um yeah, this, this one just made more sense to me. I, I looked at several locations from the other intake back to this one. And there's a, a big rock here, which I thought I could probably use as sort of a buttress, you know, to hold the, the dam material in. And then I dug a slot in the bank over there. I had a problem right off the bat with it with it sucking some air. You could, you could hear it and you could put your hand on the pipe and it would kind of chug, you know. And um, I thought, gosh, what is that? And so I just walked the pipe up looking for holes and things. And I, I, I think I figured it out that the top of this six inch pipe is kind of close to the surface of the water. And right now that's just a little bit of overflow. I, I have seen it way up here, but even when it's down like this, and I, I think the, the closeness of the pipe to the top of the water and how much this thing, it, it's really sucking hard. And I think it was just sucking a little bit of air in through right there. And so, Took it all back apart, and now this pipe, this four-inch pipe, runs all the way through this coupling and all the way across to about here in the box. And it's capped on the end, and if it's in there like this, the holes come in kind of from the bottom corners like that. So it's pulling the water in from the bottom and not sucking air in through here anymore. The, uh, the barrel that we looked at previously, this is where it lived for my first attempt. And you can see where there's the water just sort of finds its way around in every little niche and cranny. And um, so I had it here and I had this thing built up with this big elaborate thing and a bunch of that clay. Oh, it worked so well. This was ponded up nicely. Had a little bit of leakage over here, but I didn't think anything about it. Running great until the next morning when it was all down there. <laughs> um, so that was attempt number one. This is attempt number two. And this was quite a, a feat in itself. Um, I had to, this was a, a, there's kind of a hole in the bank there. And so I had to address that first. And I had several bags of that clay 
And um, so I took a bunch of rocks and stuff out of the creek and patched up this hole, put this EPDM rubber on it, had to build a dam right here uh, with sandbags and had another piece of rubber that dammed the whole creek up here and diverted everything. You see what kind of washed the soil away here. Just pull that thing up, man. You can see it in there. Yeah, you see, that's the that's the difference right there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't cut this thing down flushed with the top because there's a... a I almost suck air down the pipe now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but there's a uh, timber lock right there that I couldn't get out, so I, wow. I didn't, I didn't want to cut it out of the way. My dog, man, she'll get in here and she likes to swim around in this thing and she'll come off the banks and throw a bunch of leaves and stuff in there. And I mean, it, you know, <laughs> like it, sometimes they'll hang up like down here where the, where the water's not hitting. Right. But, but when the water comes up or when she jumps in and a big wave comes over, it just, it cleans itself and does, it, it works absolutely beautifully. Okay, uh, don't have any hinges yet. So I just have to do this manually. Yeah, so this is my uh, this is my turbine. It was built by Spencer Langston and uh, really, really works good. Um, I went through a fairly lengthy process of checking different nozzle sizes in this split hose setup here, and you know, and let Spencer know which ones work good, which ones would flow. You know, with 100% flow rate and still have overflow with the intake, which is really important for me. I don't want to dry the creek up. Plugs in there, and then it runs about a thousand feet back up to the uh, to the power system up at the yurt. These blue things are for the spray because <laughs> if we weren't, uh, if these were gone, we'd be getting wet. <laughs> The pen stock is a four inch whale casing. It's approximately 700 feet long. Runs from the turbine up to the Coanda intake box up there. I've got about 57 to 58 feet of drop and with one nozzle running, I have 25 PSI at the turbine. With two, it drops a little bit and I think that's because more water flow increases friction loss and I think that's where that's coming into play. But the water comes down, it hits the this Y, splits into two two-inch flexible hoses, and runs to the opposing nozzles in the in the turbine box. Um, and I have currently two five-eighths inch nozzles and two nine-sixteenths inch nozzles. It's nice to have the flexibility. Um, in the summertime, I can run one five-eighths inch nozzle currently because of the, the creeks are kind of low. In the wintertime, I can run both of them. And with both of them running, I can get a little over 400 watts. Um, and I have the two 916th inch nozzles as well, just for kind of some in-between stuff. Um, but there's a pressure gauge that I installed here in the T, and that just lets me know, you know, what's going on. It's nice because if there's an issue with the power up at the yurt, um, I don't have to necessarily go to the Coanda box because it's pretty much maintenance free. I can come down here and see the gauge, and if the gauge has come off of 25, I know that there's probably there's some air or something that's gotten into the system. I can shut it off and let it do its thing and just sort of start evaluating some of the problems from there. Um, but Spencer Langston built this, uh, this turbine based on the flow rate and all the parameters that, I, that he asked me for with my system. And uh, it's really, really running great. I, I picked this spot because it's out of the main creek channel enough, you know, where when it floods, it doesn't really impact this, you know, at all. Um, but it, it's still in the creek channel enough to where the water can just come straight out of the bottom and right back into the creek and I didn't have to do much there, you know, to, to mitigate that. But this thing runs from here 1,000 feet up to the charge controller. I have a 1,000 foot spool of 10-2 wire that I'm going to put in conduit soon because I'm worried about squirrels chewing it up and I would never find it over the 1,000 feet. But I don't know how much loss I have. I haven't put a meter on it here and then checked it with a meter there to see what the what the loss is over that much wire, but it's it runs what I need to run and that's all that matters to me.
Yeah, so this is uh, this is my my power setup here. I guess we'll start down low. I've got 16 uh, 12 volt AGM batteries, and I have those you know wired in series. I think it's right. Positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, and so essentially that makes one 48 volt battery. And so with the 16, I have four of those wired in parallel, uh, negative to negative, positive to positive, and so I have about I have a 48 volt battery bank with about 385 amp hours of storage. Um, power from the turbine comes in here. This uh, that's about a thousand. That's a exactly actually 1,000 foot of 10-2 uh, ground contact wire runs through this bridge rectifier. I left it sticking out from the wall just so the heat would disperse there, and it, the, the wire is pretty rigid. Um, but it runs through the bridge rectifier, which turns the AC power from the turbine into DC power here that runs through the circuit breakers here um, up to the charge controller which runs uh, back through the bigger circuit breaker and then to the main one that shuts the batteries off and onto the inverter. So these come in from the batteries, these go out to the inverter. This is a split phase inverter which is really cool. It turns somehow 48 volts into 240 volts and this runs the conduit back to the yurt over there where the 240 is nice because it will run uh, both legs or both sides of the breaker panel and it's you know Spencer was saying that it's best to keep it balanced and so that works out well and then I've got a line comes from that one into this little panel box over here which powers this shed um, this is the power shed obviously and will eventually be the bathhouse I'll have a shower here I've got a composting toilet that's that will go in here um, but that's 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 coming uh, so this is kind of fun. This has been, this was really fun to do. Um, I've never in my life done anything like this, and with the help of Spencer Langston, it. I'm not gonna say it was easy, but I, I was pretty confident. You know, he uh, he he sets the bar for technical support. He really does. He he's always there when you need him, and uh, I would recommend him to anybody. Uh, I think there are some things I could add maybe in the future, like uh, this thing has an automatic generator start. Um, it's kind of cool. I'd have to reread to get that figured out. But so far, I don't need that. I don't. I don't use the power that this thing produces. I don't have a lot going on here. So um, this makes more than I need so far. He's going to turn on the coffee pot to pull a lot of watts, and we should see the turbine pull full watts of its potential here on a charge controller. Yeah, two fifty. You know. 253, 252. This thing here is the uh, control panel for the inverter, and it's kind of cool. It shows you what the battery level's at and what the current load is on the inverter. Little coffee pot is, you know, 690. That thing draws a tremendous amount of power. It's incredible. Yeah, she's running it right at 250. Now it's now it's back in the bulk. It'll once you know now that the power uh, the coffee pot's off, it'll at that, with nothing else in there running but that fan, that'll that'll jump back up real fast. I appreciate Eric for showing off his hydro system. One of the only things that I would change from what he has done is to use the lithium iron phosphate batteries for his battery storage. He would see a tremendous amount of battery storage increase if he were to swap over from that lead acid system that he's got. Other than that, what he has seems to be working quite well for him. Thank you so much for watching this DIY Volts video, and I will see you in the next one.